I would say that most of the time that I'm working with programmed or sequenced drums, I really like to stick to using either single track instances of Sample One XT, or I will create a custom Impact XT kit. This is usually done by going through samples that fit the bill, probably with the artist beside me. Maybe we're choosing them from Splice or Sounds.com. And we're very much looking for specific sounding samples and we build them as we go. There are cases where I need to look for a very specific sound of a drum machine. Maybe that's an 808, 909, 505, 606. In that case, I have a very specific third party instrument that I turn to, and that is Revolution by Wave Alchemy. It's a contact library, and if you haven't heard it, it's absolutely amazing. It's my favorite uh, drum machine library that I have, and it's a contact library, like I said. You can play any different styles. And they have tons of different drum machines, analog kits, hybrid kits, process kits, just a great plethora of sounds that sound really, really realistic uh, in terms of the sampling. And they are exactly what they are. So instead of have me having to search for uh, specific samples and stuff like that, I can go to a kit and I can program something. And then maybe I only end up using a couple things from it, but it is my go-to. That being said, when I take a look at either an instrument part, or if we were to duplicate this instrument part, let's just close our browser for a moment, right click, we'll go to instrument parts and we'll convert this part to a pattern. Notice that it's missing that really useful information that we see when we work with a custom Impact XT kit. So when we work with Impact, we have all of the different colors, the names of the pads, because the lanes take on the name of the pad. Now that is really useful especially when you're mousing things in. So the question is, how do we get this to look like this? This is the same instrument over here. If I pull this up, it's just a different instance of contact, but the same pattern. And if I was to duplicate this, right click, and we have this in our recents, let's convert the part to a pattern. So we have all of this information. Now this is exactly what I want. So. How do we do this? Okay, we do this by saving and recalling a pitch list preset. Now, the way that we do this, you can do it either with an instrument part or a pattern part. I'm gonna go to instrument part though. By default, this will kind of be hidden. If we click the pitch names icon over here, you would expect to see an area where we could store a preset. In order to access that, we actually have to click the edit tab. Now, when we click the edit tab, we have a really quick way that we can just drag across to make these pitches visible. Now, if I click anywhere within here, I can edit the actual name of what I want this to be called. So the basics in terms of how I ended up programming this one is, first of all, you need to know what is what in terms of what pitches you're triggering. So if I open up this instance of contact and I've got a controller beside me, I know this one over here, let's switch to a different kit. Let's go back to our 808 mastered, go here. So when you're clicking these, and as long as you have the edit tab enabled, I can see that it starts at C1 and it goes all the way up to D sharp two. So I would just scroll across everything to make these all active. Now, full disclosure, I'm gonna give you a little tip here. It is much easier to do this if you have a controller hooked up where you can hit a pitch on your controller and you see visually what this is triggering. So for example, this is triggering bass drum one. So I could type in either like BD one, or if you wanted to say bass drum, or you could also change it entirely if you want. But I tend to go with the naming structure that the instruments use. So I would go bass drum one. I'm gonna click tab, go to my next one. And this is perk one. We'll tab over again. Okay, and this is gonna be snare one whatever you want to call it, however you want to do it. So the idea is that you're triggering, you're looking for the name and you're filling out this information. Now, if I didn't have a controller, it's a little bit more quirky to do because basically if I was trying to trigger this in, in drum mode, that is, um, it will automatically just bring my cursor focus into the text field. So I would actually have to temporarily 
come out of the edit mode for a moment, click this and say, okay, that's perk two. And then I'd have to go back into edit mode and then I could type in perk two like that. Now, once you're done, the way to actually store the preset, like I said, if you come out of edit mode and you click this, that option is not available. So you have to actually be in edit mode in order to store a preset. Now, a couple things I wanna talk about before I do that. First of all, if you wanna give a color, you can click this little area just to the left. So I could give specific uh, colors. Maybe I want all of my bass drums to be a red or a, something like that. And I could have all my perks being like an aqua color. These will get retained in the pitch list preset, but it's very much knowing how to toggle in and out of the edit mode in order to basically give yourself the information that you need. Now I noticed here, if I play all of these, Okay, for example, this one here is blank. It's not triggering anything, B1. So I'm gonna open up the edit tab again, and I'm going to find B1, and I'm gonna take that away from the visibility, and then here's another one, D2. So I'm gonna click here, D2, and this one doesn't need to be visible either. So once you have this done, it's pretty simple. Let's actually scroll over. Let's come out of edit mode. Let's scroll over to this one, which is already fully completed. I'll open up the edit tab, and then I have the option to store a preset. Now I've already stored this, so I'm gonna call it WA underscore revolution. Never try to type in videos. Drums, and I'm going to click okay. Now, by default, this is going to be stored in the top level folder of this presets. If you want to give things a subfolder, it's a very easy way that we can do this. We can right click and show in Finder or show in Explorer, depending on whether you're working on a Mac or a PC. And now I can just enter a new folder. And maybe I want to call this Wave Alchemy. And let's just put this preset directly into this folder. So now it's in a proper folder. Now if I come back into Studio One and I go to click here, notice this change isn't reflected yet. If we want that to be reflected in our preset browser, we open up our browser, navigate to the Home tab, re-index our presets, and then once all the presets are re-indexed, we'll be able to see that Wave Alchemy, now Wave Alchemy Revolution Drums has a preset. I already made the preset and put it in a folder here, but we've just made it again. So now it's very clear now, if I wanted to use this workflow, I would just head over to my instruments tab and I would just drag an instance of contact in here. Obviously I'd need to navigate to the browser and contact and make sure that I first of all load Wave Alchemy. Wave Alchemy. Um, another thing that I might consider doing, if this is something that I use a lot, this would be a really good point to basically create a preset in Studio One. So that means that I could even access the preset directly from within here and just drag that over. Now, the idea is that if I was to either create a pattern part or an instrument part, let's switch this one over, where are we here? Let's switch over to the drum mode. I would just come into uh, the one we created, Wave Alchemy, drums, and now I instantly have this pitch list preset. So it is a little bit of work, but you do it once. And the benefit of doing it for this type of instrument is that all of these kits that I'm using, all of these different drum machines, for the most part, except for the, the modules that are oh, percussion, but all of these follow the same structure in terms of where the bass drum are, snare drum one, snare drum two, hats, perk one, perk two. So I only have to do one pitch list preset for all of these different drum kits. And then if I need to do any programming using the step sequencer of the pattern mode, or if I wanted to just use my basic, um, basic MIDI editor in drum view, I have this, this information. It's really, really useful to me. And that definitely helps me expedite the process. And like I said, I don't go overboard with this. I just use it for the ones that I use the most. And this particular instance, uh, Wave Alchemy Revolution is my go-to when I need a virtual instrument to mimic or trigger drum machines and specific types of drum machines. Anyways, that's all the time I've got available for today. I hope that you enjoyed this content. If you did, 
please consider hitting that subscribe button. Any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'll do my absolute best to get back to you. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Cheers.